Welcome to my first video on property for beginners. In this video, I'm going to be covering the best property strategy for beginners, how to finance your property deal, and what kind of returns you should be expecting. If you've already started researching on how to start in property, you've probably heard of the BRRRR method being thrown around a lot. It stands for buy, renovate, rent, refinance, and repeat. So what does this mean and how can you actually apply it? First up, it's buy. You're not looking to buy modern properties or new build properties. You're looking to buy older properties, uh, rundown properties, dilapidated properties, um, properties that are kind of in need for some modernization and some TLC. You then look to add value to the property, which then in turn increases the price you could sell the property at. So how do you add value? This brings us on to the first R, which is renovate. There are a couple of different ways which you can renovate a property. I'm going to cover the four main ways. Um, I've done all of these, but it really depends on your own preference and kind of boils down to two main things, which is A, your budget and B, your time. So one of the main ways to renovate a property is just by fixing what's broken, uh, which is kind of a simple repair renovation technique. So whether it's a heating that needs to be fixed, maybe it's a new electric fuse box, maybe there's some um, dodgy windows that could do with a double glazing. It's essentially just doing the bare minimum that puts your property into a place where you can rent it out. The second renovation technique is what I like to call cosmetics. So it's how the property looks from the outside, walking in towards the property, and also how it looks from the inside as a first impression to a potential buyer. So this includes like a new paint, new carpet, um, and maybe there's quite an outdated kitchen which could do with some modernization, or maybe there's an old-fashioned bathroom which could do with a complete revamp. It's all about how the property looks and feels. The third renovation technique is a spatial improvement, and this is essentially playing around with the existing layout of the property, so the existing envelope of the property, in a way that maximizes the rent you could achieve from it. So maybe there's a um, separate kitchen and a lounge and you could break down the wall in between to give it more of an open space feel. Or maybe there's two reception rooms and you convert one of the reception rooms into a bedroom. Um, another common one that I do is when there's a really big master bedroom with two windows, you can put a partition wall in between and split it up into two single bedrooms, which in turn increases the rent you can get from the property. The fourth and final way, um, and probably the most expensive and time consuming way, is increasing the floor space of the property. So this could be via an extension um, at the back or adding in a conservatory, or maybe there's a loft that you could build into and convert that into another bedroom. The two that I'll be focusing mostly on in 2022 is the first two, so repairing what's broken and cosmetics. Um, especially with the shortage in builders at the moment and the extended delivery timeframes. Um, this is a quick way to go into a project, do it up, uplift the value and pull your money out and move on to your next one. Once you've renovated your property in a way which you could get the maximum rent from it, you then look to refinance the property. Refinancing in this context is when you get a new loan on the uplifted value of the property. So after you've done all your renovation works, to replace the existing loan which you took out to buy the property in the first place. There's a couple of different ways that you can buy a property um, and I'll be going into those financing methods in another video, but for the purposes of this, I'm just going to be sticking to the refinancing element. So the loan you get on a buy to let property is roughly capped at around 75% of the property price. So say you bought a property for 100,000 and you take out a buy to let loan, you're going to get about £75,000 in terms of the loan value and the remaining £25,000 you'd have to put in it as cash. Once you've uplifted the value of the property, your new loan would be 75% on the uplifted value. So say after the works, your property price is 150000 then your loan value would be 75% of 150000 which is 112500 So the idea here is to uplift the value refinance and pull all your money out, including the refurbishment costs that you've put into the property, um, and then move on to your next project. You'd still have on the side a cash generating asset, um, which will give you a rental income, um, kind of a passive income going forward. The final R is repeat. Every time you take the money out of a deal, you then put it into a new one and you repeat the process over and over and over again. As a rough rule of thumb for my projects, I usually budget around 
10% of the property price towards the refurbishment costs. The second thing I'll budget for is the hidden costs. So around 5% of the property price I would factor in for the surveyor costs, the solicitor fees, the stamp duties, um, and I'll put these, I'll, I'll take these all into account when doing my deal analysis. So the ideal deal, you want to get all of your money out. Um, so you'd look to buy a property at around 30 to 35% below market value to be able to do that. For the projects that I've done, I usually see myself having about five to 10% of my money left in, um, and then I just refinance it, take it out, and then move on to the next project. There's loads more to say about investing in property, but if you're new to the game, then the Burr method is a great way to get started. It's also a lot less risk than some of the more complex stuff, which requires planning permission or new build developments. So hopefully that was helpful. I'll be covering more property and finance related stuff in future videos, so stay tuned.